And Esther, just based on your social media, it seems like you are finding ways to enjoy the off season and you are fresh off your 28th birthday. So what did you do for your birthday? Yeah, we uh, we celebrated here at the house uh, with, you know, friends and family. Um, I wouldn't say it was a big one, but I had about 30 or 40 people here. So we enjoyed it here. I got, got a couple of presents and I was just happy to share my 28th birthday with them. After the season that you had, what was it like to return home? I imagine the community embraced you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I used to go to these local bars and restaurants uh, here by my house. And, you know, now some somebody finds a way to, you know, recognize me um, and, you know, say hi and ask for an autograph and picture. But other than that, it feels great. Uh, I mean, I, I like I like, you know, that people were watching and people were were following my uh, my season. Do you get the sense that kids in particular are really looking up to you, kids in Hallelujah, are looking up to you and the things you were able to accomplish? Yeah, I think I think uh, there has been some some uh, some excitement and some you know urge to watch me because um, obviously I, I grew up here in Hialeah. Um, I played just right around the corner here from my house uh, as a little kid, and um, you know being in the big leagues and, and having the success I had this year. Uh, not being so tall and not being the most, you know, the most talented prospect uh, gives them a sense of, you know, there's a there's a time and place for everybody and everything. So hopefully they can continue and and and, and do what they like to do so they can reach uh, their goals they want to reach. You've had a little bit of time to reflect on last season. So what stands out to you about last season? I think the fact that I was able to throw 150 innings. Um, I know I got hurt, uh, you know, in late August for two weeks and. Um, obviously got hurt in the playoffs, but I think uh, the biggest challenge for me was uh, not only to, you know, pitch well, but to to pitch for as long as I did this season. Um, I think that was the biggest hurdle for me this season because I never had pitched past, I think, 115, 20 innings um, with playoffs included. So When you look, we always say this past season, but really it started the season before we saw that you were capable of getting out major league hitters, especially as a starter. What was the key in building off of that and allowing you to throw that amount of innings? Well, I think it all started with with um, with confidence. Um, I think uh, the the more I I, I pitched in games, the more comfortable I got. you know, getting on the mound in Yankee Stadium and anywhere else um, in the big leagues, I think the the confidence uh, I had to build for myself in order to to pitch the way I did, and um, I think it all started also with the off season training that I that I w- I've been doing. Um, they've helped me out here in Miami. Um, you know, get to goals where I wanted to go. We we talked to Cressy on the phone, and we we wanted to point out you know deficiencies that I had in my body and wh- where I can get better and where I can move um, a lot faster. Um, so I think everything went in hand with all that. And plus, uh, like I said, the confidence, you know, they, they, they both helped me out to, to, to be who I am today. Is there anything that you, Eric Cressy, Matt Blake identified heading into this off season that you're working on something in particular? Yeah. Uh, we, we do have to get on a call here now, uh, very soon because I had, I have just gotten off my rehab stuff. Um, I've been rehabbing my, my, uh, my growing, uh, for the time being here in Miami. Um, so I do have to jump in a call with them, but I did jump in a call with Matt Blake and I told him what my goals were this year and what he want, what he thought I should improve and could improve at. Um, but as far as like the, the training stuff and the strength stuff, uh, we got to get with Cressy and see what kind of things we want to hit on. Uh, just because now I just got over, I just got over my growing. Um, it's finally healthy. I feel great. Um, I've been running, I've been jogging. So, that's kind of like the, the the first step to it. But now we're going to get into the weight training. You mentioned goals. You were first time all-star last year. How much better do you think you can be? Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess no secret that this was an amazing season for me. Uh, and I think for anybody that could have thrown what I did this year, I think everybody would have been happy with the success that I had. But um, like I said, I think I think the, the biggest hurdle last year was to get to 100 plus innings. Um, and I think this 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 go around is going to be to get to 200 innings. I think that's going to be my my biggest goal was is to pitch more innings than what I did last year. Um, obviously, try and be as healthy as I can for the for the full year. Um, and I think everybody everything else will come, whether it's the ERA lowering it or whether it's striking out more people or whether it's uh, you know allowing less base runners on. Um, I think that all comes in hand with being healthy. If I'm healthy, I think I'm able to, I'm able to do that again. 
Hey, when I spoke to you heading into last spring training, you were kind of wondering if you were in the rotation, were you the outside looking in? How different is your mindset this offseason in preparing for this spring? Yeah, well, this spring training is going to be a little different. I feel like because obviously I threw 158 innings, um, I think I've gotten enough time off with my arm to kind of get it back, uh, uh, you know, like a, like a refresh. Um, but then again, we, 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 we go into spring training um, with, you know, WBC uh, in front of us. And I obviously have to come in and, and some, some type of shape or form that I have to be ready to compete, you know? Um, so I think it doesn't change from all the other past off seasons that I've had. I think uh, I gotta be, I gotta come in and, and, and make sure I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go for that WBC because it's going to be really important for me. Um, and obviously I want to perform after that during the season for, for what the, 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 the bigger goal is, which is to get to the playoffs and win the championship. What excites you about pitching in the WBC? And was that at all a hard decision for you to say, yes, I want to be on that roster? Uh, no, it wasn't hard at all. Actually, they called me, I want to say late October. Um, and they said, Hey, is, do you have any interest in pitching on the WBC? I said, like I said, yes, like, like faster oh, yeah. than they couldn't even finish. They, they, they couldn't even finish the sentences. I was already saying yes. Um, but no, I mean, I, I, growing up there, the W, the WBC has been in Miami. I think 2013 was the low, was the last one here in Miami. And I was in high school, um, when it happened. So going to the ballpark and, and seeing obviously the best in the world compete against each other, um, was was kind of a, you know, kind of a dream for me, uh, not only to be in, to play in the big leagues, but also participate in one of the, the best tournaments in the world. So when I got the call, it was, it was a definite yes. It was an easy yes, obviously with clearance from the Yankees and, you know, it, uh, hoping that everything was okay for me to go, especially with the growing injury that I had. But um, once they gave me the green light, it was, it was a no brainer. What do you think of the roster? You have to feel pretty good about your chances. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice to it's nice to play with all the superstars. I mean, you go, you know, from top to bottom. Uh, pitching staff also, uh, guys that are you know going to be in the Hall of Fame, guys that are superstars in the game. So um, I'm not only I'm not only excited to play in it, but I'm only I'm, I'm more excited to uh, pick on 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 those people that 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 have been playing for a while and and see what their mindset is and see what their goals were throughout the years. Um, so I can so I can feed off that. Speaking of rosters, the Yankees got a big present under the tree this year in the form of Aaron Judge. I believe I saw you were at the Bucks game with him the day before, day and a half before he officially decided. Nestor, did you know anything? Did you know he was coming back? I had no idea, to be honest. Um, I was trying to throw some, you know, some little pointers to see if he would give me anything. But he was, I mean, if he was playing poker, I, I, would, I couldn't tell the hand he was playing. Um, it was just fun to be around him. Obviously, he. We, I was in Tampa for something, and he. He also obviously lives there. So I, I. I texted him. I said, "Hey, Aaron, what are you doing?" He goes, "Hey, I, we're actually going to the Bucks game tomorrow night. If you're if you're still in town, I'm like, of course, I'd I'd, I'd love to come." So, uh, me and my fiance went. Uh, we 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 hung out with them at the game, and it was it was awesome to be there with them. And and I said I said to my fiance, I said, "Can you imagine he signs you know with us tomorrow, and we can say that we were we were with them the day before he actually signed his contract, but." He took it a little, a little longer, and that was okay. But I'm happy he's back on pinstripes. Uh, you know, he deserves everything in the world. He, he's, he's. I feel like uh, anybody you want to be like it, you want to be like him because he's a he's a special human being. Was there any sell that night on your behalf saying you got to come back? We <laughs> want you back in pinstripes. <laughs> I think the picture on Instagram kind of told them that you know we needed him back. Uh, I got a lot of speculation about that. People were going crazy about it because they were like, you got to know something. You got to know something. And then once the news hit, it's like, you definitely knew something. And I, I didn't know anything. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just happy he he made the decision, not only for not only for us, but for him and his family. I know you guys always have the group chat going with the team, certain group chats. What was the reaction when the news started trickling out that he was coming back? Oh, everybody was going nuts. Everybody was going crazy. Um, obviously, congratulating him. But um and he was obviously the person that he always is kind of humble and, and, you know, not trying to pay any attention to what, what had, what had just happened, but he was basically saying how happy he was to be with us again and go to battle with us again, uh, you know, for years to come. Um, and that's kind of the person he is. He just, he wants to be there for the guys and, and, and be as respectful as possible to, to, to the game. All right. Christmas just around the corner. So I have to ask you what's on your wish list. 
Oh, so many things. <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm actually um, in the market for a car. So hopefully I can give myself a little, a little car um, for myself when I go to New York. So that's kind of what's on my, on my, on my Christmas list. List. I'd ask you what make what model, but I don't want everyone following you around. When no, you go no, coach, please. So I don't want to ask you that. <laughs> hey, enjoy the holidays, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you, Meredith.